of what he's done for me. I've got a right to raise my hands and shout when I think of how he set me free. I've got a right to lift my voice. I've got a right to sing and rejoice. I've got a right to tell the world, so let the children of the Lord rejoice. But I've got a right, I've got a right to praise the Lord. you beloved and welcome to the program the message of the hour may god just richly bless you and call all your friends your neighbors tell them to tune in on the radio east river they can live stream via our website or facebook www.radioeastriver.co.za or they can just download the app from the play store and they can tune in and may god just richly and abundantly bless you i'm brother elmar from the cape town tabernacle church and i will be sharing with you the message of the hour this morning so may God just richly and abundantly bless you as we go into a word of prayer. Dear God in heaven, thank you for such a wonderful opportunity that we have that we can gather around your word. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. 
Lord, we are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, and we pray that you will just fill us. We pray, Lord, that wherever your word goes this morning, that you will just confirm your word, that you will just vindicate it, Lord, by giving a revelation and understanding to those that are tuned in, namely the listener. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your spirit will just quicken the word, and that your word will accomplish the purpose for which you sent it. Bless us now, Lord, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you once again, beloved, and welcome to the program, The Message of the Hour. We just listened to a wonderful song speaking about the right that the children of the Lord have. It says, I got a right to praise the Lord. I got a right. And it says, nobody has got a right except for the children of the Lord that see the light. Those that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, they have the right. And we shall read from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 16. The Bible says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Ezo, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Just a verse above that says, Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So, beloved, we will speak about the birthright this morning. And the Bible gives us a very stern warning in this book of Hebrews. And we know that the book of Hebrews is the book that the Apostle Paul, we believe, wrote to the Hebrews. And the Bible says that God is the God of the Hebrews. When God sent Moses to Pharaoh, God told him to tell Pharaoh, tell them that the God of the Hebrews have sent you. And we see in Exodus chapter 5 verse 3 that they did exactly that. They said the God of the Hebrews has met us. And God is the God of the Hebrews. God is the God of Israel as the Bible says. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It goes further in the book of Romans and it says that God is not just the God of the Jews but is also the God of the Gentiles. So we serve a wonderful God and he has given us his holy word. And his word is called the Holy Scripture. And the Holy Scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it was written by holy men. It was driven by the Holy Spirit. So we're just grateful for the Lord for giving us this Holy Scripture in the book of Hebrews. So the Bible gives us a strict admonition. It gives us a warning to not be like Ezo, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So it's a stern warning, and whenever God gives a warning, there is always consequences that will follow should we not listen to the warning that God gives us. And the story about Jacob and Esau, we know that they were twin brothers. And the Bible speaks that Esau was the oldest because he came out first, and then Jacob came second. And the Bible says that the following thing happened in Exodus chapter 25. And this thing that happened really didn't please God. Concerning the birthright. Exodus, uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. And Jacob sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. And therefore his name was called Edom. The Bible says, And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Ezo said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Ezo bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up, and went his way. Thus Ezo despised his birthright. So that is the story how it unfolded in the book of Genesis. Now the Bible gives us a warning to not do the same thing that Ezo did to sell his birthright. Now the birthright in the Bible was a very important thing. It was a very holy thing. It was a very special thing. To have the birthright meant that you would be the, the heir of whatever your father had. And the birthright was only meant for the firstborn son. And the Bible gave strict rules and laws concerning the birthright. So if you had the birthright, you were truly a blessed person because whatever your father had accumulated and whatever your father had, the day when your father died, you would become the heir of all things. And we see throughout the Bible, we see different men that had many sons. And upon their deathbed, they gave many blessings to the other sons. But usually the firstborn son, he was the heir because he had the birthright. 
and he was usually the one that inherited all things. And God gave rules concerning the birthright. If you go into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, we see the Lord speaking through Moses, his servant, and God giving the law of the birthright. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall e acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. So we see God even giving an example. Should it happen that a man is two wives and he has children by both wives that it doesn't matter if he if he hates the the mother that bare him the first uh, the firstborn the firstborn the right will not change it will still remain to the child that was born first and that child is the one that will be entitled to have the inheritance and that is the way god laid it down and that is the way it will be forever now this birthright was a very holy thing because it entitled you to the inheritance. And we see what Ezo did. He did, he took what was holy and he cast it away, although it was nothing. Ezo thought to himself that he's about to die and what good will the birthright do him anyhow? So he sold his birthright to his brother Jacob, as the Bible said. Now Jesus gives us a stern warning to not cast away our pearls. We can read in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. Jesus said that we mustn't give what is holy to the dogs. We mustn't cast away our pearls before the swine. So this birthright is something that God takes very, very serious, beloved. But now before we go deeper into what the birthright means to us living in this day of age, we need to say this. That before you can have the birthright, you must first have a birth. There is no birthright without a birth. Nobody could step forward during the Old Testament and say, I have the birthright if you were never even born. So you first had to have a birth before you could have the birthright. And the same applies to the New Testament. You must first have a birth before you can get the birthright. And Jesus says in the book of John, chapter 3, in verse 3 and verse 5 he says verily verily i say unto you except the man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god and then he says in verse 5 i say unto you that except the man be born again or born of water and of spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god <coughs> so beloved it's very important that you must be born again there is no shortcut into the kingdom of God. There is no easy way but the Lord's way. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sometimes people think there is an easier, a quicker access to heaven by just joining a church or by just shaking hands with a preacher or by just some other uh, creed or something they say up. But there is only one way according to Jesus and that way is by being born again. You need to have a birth. Now we know that in the natural, beloved, a birth always happens first with a seed. I am the seed of my father, you are the seed of your father. So a birth always starts with a seed in the natural. And the same applies to the spiritual birth. It starts with a seed. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 8 verse 11 that the word of God is the seed. And the Apostle Peter was writing in 1 Peter 1 in verse 23. He was saying these words. He said that we are born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So it is the seed of the word of God that allows the new birth, that makes it possible to happen. It all starts with a seed. The seed first gets sown into fertile ground and then it, it gets wetened. The Holy Spirit quickens the seed and then it produces a birth. And that is how it works in the kingdom of God. You need to be born again. You need to first have a birth before you can even think of the birthright. You need to be born again. 
Now, beloved, many years ago, I was born into the family of uh, my father and my mother. And I never did knock on the door and ask them if I can join the family. I was simply born into the family. Now, the same works in the kingdom of God. You don't knock on the door and ask if you can join, but you get born into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if you're not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it's very important that we must have this experience of being born again. And we can only be born again by the seed of the word of God. The word of God is what allows us to be born again. Now we see that in the natural, all of us were born. And when Jesus was introducing this teaching of being born again, even Nicodemus was confused about it. And he was asking Jesus this question, how can a man after he is born be born again? Must he go back into the womb of his mother? Just listen to this. Verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So that was his understanding. He was confused. And that is not what Jesus meant about it. Now we know that in the, the natural birth, beloved, there is stages that happens before we get born. We know before a child is born into the world, there is a breaking of water. We know after the breaking of water, there is blood. And we know that after that, the child catches breath and once he breathes once his head is out we know that the child is officially declared as being born there is a birth so it's water it's blood and it's breath and in the spiritual the same applies to the new birth beloved you first need to come through the water and the water represents justification and the bible says in romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with god through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the first faith, the, the, the first step in being born again, is the phase of justification. Justification is when you hear the gospel of truth and when you accept it and when you get washed in the blood of the Lamb by the confessing of your sins and by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your, as your Savior. Then you get justified by putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, by repenting of your sins. And then the next stage we see in the natural is the water. And in the spiritual, there's also water. And we know that water purifies and water cleanses. And the next stage in the new birth is the process of sanctification. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 12 that Jesus, to sanctify the people, he had to suffer without the gate. The Bible says in John 17 verse 17, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is the truth. And sanctification is the process where God purifies you, where he sanctifies you, where he makes you clean. The word sanctify means cleaned and set aside for service. And that is what God does. When you come to the Lord, it's like somebody picking up a dirty glass from the sand. That is when God lifts you up out of the miry clay as a sinner. And then the next stage is God cleanses that, that, that uh, vessel. That is sanctification. God cleans you through his word. And God sanctifies you. And after you are cleaned and sanctified comes the next stage. Now as we said, before baby is born, it's the blood, it's the water, and then the baby catches breath. And then the moment the baby catches breath, the baby is born. And the same happens in the spiritual. After you've been justified, after you've been sanctified, then comes the breath of God. The breath of God is His Spirit. The breath of God is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is what gives you life. Without the Spirit of God, there is no life. Now we know that in the natural, we need to breathe. We need to breathe in oxygen so that we can live. If we don't breathe in oxygen, there's no natural life. Now the same applies in the spiritual, beloved. The same thing applies. If you don't breathe the breath of God, if God doesn't breathe into you his spirit, then there is no spiritual life. So the third phase of the new birth is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is when God breathes his life into you. This is when God gives you his own life. Now, the word eternal life in the Greek language means uh, the word zoe now zoe means god's own life so when god gives you eternal life god gives you his own life because god alone has eternal life so when god breathes his life into you and god baptizes you with his spirit when god fills you with his spirit god gives you life 
He gives you life eternal. So it's very important that you must have the birth first before you can have the birth right. You must come through justification. You must come through sanctification. You must come through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the breath of God when God breathes on you and God gives you eternal life, beloved. You must be born again. You must be born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Now the word of God, as we said, it is the seed. And the seed needs to be preached in its pure form. And the moment you open the womb of your heart, you receive the seed of the word of God on the inside. And then the Holy Ghost comes along and he quickens that seed. Now the Apostle Paul was writing in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And he was saying these words, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, In whom you have also trusted after you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that after you have believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So beloved, we see first you receive the word of truth, and then after that the spirit of truth comes and he seals the word in your heart. So it's first the word of truth and then it is the spirit of truth. The spirit comes on the word and quickens the word. It vindicates the word. So you need to open the womb of your heart for the seed of the word. And after the seed of the word, which is the word of truth, is planted in your heart, the engrafted word, then the spirit of truth comes and it quickens the word. So it's very important that we must have this experience. We must first be born again. Otherwise, we cannot go into the kingdom of God. Now, beloved, once you are born again, you are then entitled to the birthright. Hallelujah. You need to first have the birth before you can have the birthright. Now, as we just saw now what the birth means to be born again, now we need to see what the Bible has to say. What is the birthright in the New Testament? Now, the birthright in the New Testament is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, just as it was in the Old Testament, that the birthright entitled you to be an heir of the father. It means that you inherited all things that your father had because you were the firstborn. Now, the church in the New Testament is also called the church of the firstborn. You can read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26, where the Bible calls the New Testament church the church of the firstborn. So just as it was in the Old Testament that the, the person that was the firstborn had the birthright and he was the heir of all that the father had, so also in the New Testament, those that have been born again those that have the birth the new birth of the new testament they become the church of the firstborn and they are entitled to the birthright and the birthright is what enables them to become the heirs of god now the bible also calls jesus christ the firstborn of the creation of god the bible calls him also the only begotten and the bible calls him the heir of god and the bible says that if we belong to christ then we are also heirs of God. You can read that in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul is writing this words to the church and he says, verse 29, And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and are heirs according to the promise. So once you belong to Christ, once you are born again, you are entitled to the birthright. And once you are entitled to the birthright, you become an heir to God. The Bible calls Christ the heir of God, but the Bible says that if we belong to Christ, we are co-heirs with him. Romans chapter 8 and verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be ye that ye suffer with him, that you may also be glorified together. So it's very important, beloved, that we must be born again so that we can be entitled to the birthright and so that we can become heirs of God. Now, the birthright in the New Testament is what entitles you to the kingdom of God. The birthright in the New Testament it is what gives you access to the kingdom of God. The birthright in the New Testament is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what does the baptism of the Holy Ghost do? It seals you into the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, 
by which you have been sealed until the day of your redemption. So the birthright in the New Testament, it seals you into the kingdom of God. It makes you an heir of the kingdom of God. It makes you an heir of eternal life. It makes you an heir to all the good things of God, all the blessings of God. Whether it's healing, whether it's miracles, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's salvation, all the good things that God has in store, you become an heir of God if you have the birthright. The birthright is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But before you can have the birthright, you must be born again. It's very important. Now the question obviously comes, how do you get the birthright? Now we know in the Old Testament times, the only way to get the birthright is by being the firstborn. And in the New Testament, the only way to get the birthright is by being born again. And the Bible tells us a formula in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. It gives us the key how to get this birthright. It says in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you shall receive the birthright. You shall receive the Spirit. So God gave a promise that He would give His Spirit to those that will obey Him. And God is calling people to repentance all over the world. God wants people to repent. God wants people to turn away from their wicked ways. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17 that God has determined a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And he gave certainty of this by raising up Christ from the dead. The Bible says he will judge the world in righteousness through a man that he has appointed. And he gave certainty of that by raising him from the dead. God wants people to repent. God wants people to turn away from their wicked ways. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he was preaching the same message of repentance. Jesus was preaching in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There was also a man by the name of John the Baptist. And the Bible said he was sent as a forerunner of the first coming of Christ. He was sent as the one that came to prepare the way of the Lord. And the Bible says in Matthew 3, verse 2, that he was preaching and he was telling the people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we see John, we see Jesus, we see all the apostles, all the prophets. They had this one, one common thing which they were preaching. And that was that people should repent. People should turn away from their evil. People should turn away from their wicked ways. And they should turn to the loving God. People should turn away from their idols. People should turn away from the abominations. People should turn away from all these evil things that they are committing. And they should turn to the loving God. And that is the central message of the Bible. God wanting people to have a relationship with Him. God wanting people to return back to Him. That is the purpose of the plan of salvation. God reconciling mankind back to him God bringing people back into his presence into his fellowship into his love and God wants you to repent now the Bible says in Isaiah 1 verse 18 though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as wool though they be red like crimson they shall be made white as wool God wants you to turn away from the evil that you are doing and God wants you to come to Him. The Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 9 that if we confess our sins, He is true and just to forgive us the sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God wants you to repent. The Bible says repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus gave a promise in Mark 16, verse 16, he said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be condemned. And that is the words of Jesus. Now, if you repent and you are baptized, the Bible says you will get the birthright. You will get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost will seal you into the kingdom of God. It will enable you to be an heir of God. It will enable you to become an heir of the kingdom of God. You will become a co-heir, a joint heir with Christ and you will be given access to go into the kingdom of God. Now we're going to take a break now, beloved. We're going to listen to that song again, I've got a right. I've got a right to praise the Lord. Please call more of your friends and neighbors. Tell them to tune in on the program, the message of the hour. And may God richly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Children of the Lord who sing the night 
Beloved, and welcome back to the program, the message of the hour. Yeah, we're just having some nice fellowship with the Lord. We're just hearing from His Word. And it's such a privilege to know that God still speaks to us in this day. The Bible says in the same book of Hebrews chapter 1 that God in sundry times spoke to the fathers to the, through the prophets. But in this last days, He has spoken to us through His Son which he has made the heir of all things. And we're so grateful that God is still speaking through his son. And the Bible calls Jesus the son of God. And the Bible also calls Jesus the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then it says in verse 14, And the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. So we see this, that the word of God is Jesus actually in letter form. And as long as we're reading the Bible, we're actually having Jesus speaking to us. He's having a conversation with us. He's having fellowship with us. And the Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 7, that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness so we're just having a wonderful time with the lord this morning speaking about the birthright and it's such a wonderful th wonderful thing to have the birthright and it's a holy thing it's an important thing and god takes it very very serious even during the old covenant times the birthright was what entitled you to be the heir of the father you had to be the firstborn to get the birthright and you were in a very lucky position if you were the firstborn child because all that your father had accumulated over the years, all the wealth of your father, all his assets, his possessions, you were the one that inherited that once your father dies. And we as the New Testament believers are also the heirs of God because we have that birthright, beloved. And we know that Jesus had to die so that we can become the heirs of all the goodness of God. Jesus had to die on the cross so that we can become heirs of God. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 5 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Had it not been for a man called Jesus, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, then forever my soul would have been lost. So we just thank the Lord Jesus for all the good things that he has done for us. Now, beloved, this birthright, as we were speaking, was a holy thing. And the Bible gives us a strict admonition. It gives us a stern warning in the book of Hebrews 12, verse 16. It says that we should not sell our birthright as Ezo did for a morsel of meat or a morsel of bread. So he just sold what was holy. He just cast it away just like that. And many examples in the Bible we see of people that did something similar to that. People that took the grace of God and they just cast it away. People that just took the goodness of God and just trampled on it. And they exchanged it for the things of the world. We see the Apostle Paul even writing about it in one of his epistles to Timothy. And speaking about a man by the name of Demas. And Paul said that Demas had forsaken him because he had started to love this present world. And many times we see 
this example happening over and over again where people serve God but then they sell their birthrights for the things of the world and just as Demas had forsaken Paul because he started to love this present world now the Bible says in the epistle of the Apostle John first John chapter 2 it says love not the world or the things that are in the world if any man love the world or the things that are in the world the love of the Father is not in him and we see that he fell from grace he sold his birthright he left the kingdom of god and he exchanged it for the things of the world for temporary short pleasure but we see god giving us a beautiful example once again in the book of hebrews i just love this book of hebrews beloved because he's the god of the hebrews speaking to us not just to the hebrews but also to us because he is the god of the hebrews but he's not also their god he's our god also and the bible speaks about moses in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that he chose by faith Moses when he was born was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses when he came to, to years refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the places of sin for a season. And we see Moses did exactly the opposite than what Demas did. Demas forsake the kingdom of God because he started to love the present world. But Moses, on the other hand, he rather chose to suffer the reproach of the with the people of God than to have the places of sin for a season. And that is how it works with sin and with the places of the world. It's only for a season. It's only for a short while. But eventually it comes to an end. But we see that Demas did this thing. He did also, just like Esau did, selling his birthright, s uh, turning his back on the kingdom of God and going to the things of the world, going back. And the Apostle Peter was also writing about this. He was speaking about the false teachers in 2 Peter 2. He was talking about them that as a dog goes back to his vomit, so do these go also. And so it is with those that turn their backs on God, that sell their birthrights. They are like a dog that goes back to its vomit, the Bible says, and like a pig that, that wallows in the mud again. Doesn't matter if you clean him, he goes back into the mud again. And we see that it is possible to sell your birthright, and God hates this. God hates this so much. And the Bible says in Malachi chapter 1, in verse 2 and 3, that God says that he has chosen Jacob, not Esau. And God says he have loved Jacob and he hated Esau. So God made a very hard statement. God said he hated Esau. But why did God hate Esau? God hated him because he sold his birthright. He gave away that which was holy. And Jesus says in Matthew 7 that we mustn't cast away our pearls to the swine or to the dogs. Don't give away the holy things for the things of the world. And God said he hated Esau. And we saw also there's other individuals throughout the Bible that did this thing. They sold their birthrights. They turned their backs on God. We see an individual by the name of Judas. He sold Christ for 30 shekels of silver. And we know that happened so that the scripture might be fulfilled, which was written in Zechariah 11 verse 13, that for 30 shekels of silver he was sold. And we see Judas betraying Christ. And that is what it means to sell your birthrights. It means to betray Christ, to betray the kingdom of God, to turn your back on the word of God. And that is what many times people do. They leave the kingdom of God. Now, beloved, that is not the way to go. If you have been born again, God has given you a birthright. And that birthright entitles you to the kingdom of God. But don't sell that birthright. Don't sell out to the things of the world. But stay committed to Christ. You know, to follow Jesus is not easy. There's always a price that needs to be paid. But Jesus promised us to be with us throughout the journey. Just listen to Matthew chapter 16 where Jesus gives an invitation, but he also sets down the requirements. He sets down an invocation, invitation that if you want to follow him, but he also tells about the consequences. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works. So we love it to follow Jesus. If you want to follow him, he says, take up the cross and follow him. 
end of the day, you need to decide, is it better to follow Christ and to have your soul saved, or is it better to not follow Christ but to lose your soul? Now, our souls are very precious to God. Our souls is more precious than the earth even itself because we are the crown of God's creation. If the earth just existed without us, what would the earth have meant? But God placed us on the earth so that we can rule on the earth. The Bible says that God made the earth to be inhabited. And God took us as so precious to him. The Bible says that of all creation, we as humans are made in the creation, in the image of God. You can read Genesis 1 verse 27, 26. The Bible says that in the image of God, he created him. So beloved, you have a soul and your soul is precious to God. Don't lose that soul by going after the things of the world. But you can have that soul saved if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus paid a price so that your soul can be saved. So we see that God placed man as the crown of his creation, beloved. And God takes it very important when it comes to the souls of men. That's why God himself came down to save our souls. Jesus was God incarnated in the, in the form of a human being. The Bible says that he was the image of the invisible God in Hebrews chapter 1. The Bible says that in John chapter 14, one of the disciples of Jesus was asking this question. He was asking, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. And Jesus said, Philip, I've been so long with you and you've not seen me. He had seen me has seen the Father. So when you looked at Christ, you looked at God. Now God is invisible. The Bible says nobody has seen God, but the Bible says that the only begotten Son that was in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So if you wanted to know what, what God was like, you just looked at Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, you study and examine the life of Jesus Christ because He showed us what God was like because God was in Him. The Bible says that God was in Christ and He was reconciling the world to Himself. God made a way for your soul to be saved. Your soul doesn't need to be lost. Many individuals throughout history have turned their backs on God. They've done what Esau has done. They have sold their birthright. Now, beloved, God has made a way for you, and that way is still possible. That way is Jesus Christ. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And if, we, if you accept him as your Lord and your Savior, you can have eternal life. Jesus says in John 6, verse 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, has eternal life. Christ promises forgiveness of sins. Christ promises eternal life. Christ even promises to raise you up from the dead. Jesus says in John 11 verse 25, that he that believes in me shall live although he has died. He promises life after death, but he even promises us to raise our bodies again from the grave at his second coming. You can have that birthright. It is possible. It is accessible. You can be born again. The new birth is still available. And it is the only way for somebody to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, sometimes people think there's many ways to get into the kingdom of God. People think they can do this, they can do that. But Jesus gives us a warning in John chapter 10. Jesus speaks that he is the door of the sheep. And Jesus says that if any man goes through him, he shall enter into heaven. But Jesus also speaks about the thief and the robber and of the hireling. And Jesus says that those are the ones that don't enter through the door. Just listen to this. John chapter 10 from verse 7. Verily I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So beloved God makes it very plain that he is the door. So there isn't a way to jump over the fence to get into heaven. The only way to get into heaven is to go through the door. And Jesus made that door possible by telling us that we must be born again. We must be born again of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. You need the new birth. Without the new birth, you're not even a normal person, beloved. Now, the natural birth entitles you to come into this world and to live as an earthling. But the new birth 
makes you a heavenly creature. It gives you a divine nature. It gives you a supernatural ability. And it gives you access to go into heaven. The new birth does many things, people. people. The new birth gives you a new heart, a new life. God promised in Ezekiel chapter 36, I will give them a new heart and I will give them a new spirit. And in that spirit, I will give them my spirit. So what the new birth does, it makes you a new person. It gives you a new heart. It gives you a new thought. It gives you a new life. You become part of God once you are born again. Now, as I said, I myself was born many years ago into my family, and I never asked them prior to that if I can join the family. I was merely born into the family, and that's how I became part of the family. Now, the same applies to the kingdom of God. You need to be born again into the kingdom of God for you to become part of the kingdom of God, to become part of the family of God. That is the only way that God will recognize you if you are born again. Then you become one of his own. Now the Bible does speak that there are those that God recognizes to be his own and there are those that God does not recognize. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, it says that the foundation of God stands sure with this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. God knows who's born again. God knows who's his children. And God puts a seal on them. And that seal is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul was writing, he said in Ephesians 4 verse 30, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God by which we have been sealed until the day of your redemption. So God puts a seal on his children that are born again, and that seal seals them into the kingdom of God. But uh, there's also a group of people that are claiming they know the Lord, but the Lord doesn't know them. And there is a surprise waiting for them at the day of judgment. Now, at the day of judgment, there is going to be some surprises, beloved. You know, those that love evil lives, they are the ones that will not be surprised because they know what's waiting for them. Those that have rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are the ones that they will not be surprised at the day of judgment. They know exactly what's happening. But it is those that thought they were right, those that thought they were on the right track, those are the ones that will be disappointed at the day of judgment. Listen to what Jesus says. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. So Jesus speaks about those that claim to know him, but he does not know them. And although they did all these wonderful things, the Lord says he doesn't know them. Why did the Lord not know them? Because they did not have the seal of God. The Bible says the foundation of God stands sure with this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. The seal is the Holy Ghost. The seal is the birthright. It seals you into the kingdom of God. So there are those that the Lord does not recognize. And then there are those that the Lord does recognize to be his own. Beloved, the new birth is still available. You can still get the birthright. You can still get the birthright that will entitle you to become an heir to the kingdom of God. May God richly bless you. We're going to go for a word of prayer now. Wherever you are, whatever your need may be, trust the Lord as we pray. He said, whatever we ask in his name, that he will give. There might be some of you listening in this morning that are sick and afflicted. There might be some of you that have financial difficulties. There might be some of you that have some challenges at the workplace. There might be some of you that have problems in your household, maybe with your wife, with your husband, with your children. The Lord is able to do far more abundantly above that which you can ask or pray. So let us just close our eyes and we trust the Lord. There might be even those that are not saved this morning. The Lord is able to save you. The Lord is able to forgive you. The Lord is able to set you free. If you are just willing to open your heart, the Lord is willing to accept you. There might be those that have not gone through the process of being born again. The Lord is able to give you that birth this morning. And after he gives you that birth, he gives you the birthright that entitles you to his kingdom. That makes you an heir of God. Whatever your need may be. Just trust that the Lord will meet you this morning as we pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you for your grace and your goodness. Thank you for teaching us about the birthright and about the new birth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, that you are still touching hearts and lives. Lord, you know the needs of the people this morning. And we just pray that you will touch their hearts, Lord. Touch their lives. 
I don't know who's tuned in this morning, Lord, but you know them, and you know their lives. You knew them even before they were born. And I just pray you, Lord Jesus, that you will just supply all their needs. We sometimes sing a song that says, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. He is passing by this moment, your very need to supply. Thank you, Lord, for touching those hearts this morning and supplying their needs. Be with them, O oh Lord. Bless them. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you, beloved, and thank you for those that were tuned in on the program, The Message of the Hour. My contact number is 078-721-9991. 078-721-9991. May God bless you till the next time. As I go off the air, we listen to that song again, I've Got a Right to Praise the Lord. Amen. Children of the Lord who sing the night.
grand grocery giveaway at Middlestock Mall in Tower. You could win free groceries for a year just by shopping and eating at your favorite mall. Simply spend 150 rand at participating stores or 30 rand at our fast food restaurants. Then place your entry form and tail slip in the entry boxes in center to enter. You could be the lucky winner of free groceries for a whole year. Competition values from 13 September to 31st October 2021. T's and C's apply. Middlestad Mall, your connection. This is Radio Eastribble. We are located at Sanbury Square Mall on the corner of Old Fora Road and Baden Powell Drive, East River. You can visit our website at www.radioeastriver.co.za. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Radio East River. And stay in touch with us via WhatsApp on 064-536-9095. That's 064-536-9095.